I must say there are very few businesses uh, that say hear the words hello I'm your local environmental health officer that go yay you're here thank you Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another in our series of Who Safety Bite Size uh, presented by Highfield. My name is Sterling Crew, and I'm joined as ever by my friend and colleague Richard Spranger who is chair of Highfield and today we're going to talk about environmental health officers or environmental health practitioners as they're sometimes called. Richard, the role of the EHO in local authority um, we both worked in the local authority before as EHOs. Um, how would you describe what the objective is and where, how they spend their time? And perhaps we'll also give a bit of insight later on is um, what's it like being an EHO and what do they look for actually in the ho hospitality premises? So um, how would you describe their role? I've always been in the camp that their role is to protect the public to ensure businesses serve safe food um, and ensure that there aren't outbreaks of food poisoning. And I see that as being the prime objective for employing EHOs or food inspectors. I mean, many countries don't have EHOs, so we've got food inspectors. So that's their role. Um, so Richard, how do you think they can perform that role? You're quite right. Their job is to protect public health. So what the what are the tools they have to do that well this is where it gets interesting because there is there's quite often there's two schools of thought one is that they're there to purely or solely enforce legislation the other one uh, the other school of thought is that they're there to educate advise advise and support so they've um, certainly got two uh, distinct roles in many respects, and I am very concerned at the present shortage of enforcement officers and EHOs that people seem to be saying, well, food standards are fairly satisfactory, they, 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 we know there's a shortage of environmental health officers, and, but nevertheless, the, there aren't increases in food poisoning. However, we're missing the point that the a lot of food businesses, especially small ones, rely on the environmental health officer to provide advice and support. It's not just about uh, taking corrective action when they get something wrong, it's giving them preventive information to prevent food poisoning outbreaks. So I think that's very important. So let's maybe explore that a bit further, Richard, you're quite right. For especially small, medium enterprises, almost mum and pop operations, they don't normally employ people to give them advice. Hopefully they're training themselves. But the EHO might be the only food safety professional that they see. And maybe once a year, it's the only person they can get to answer those questions they've always had in their mind. And I note also, Richard, that some local authorities don't take any prosecutions. There are, if you look at the FSA figures, some authorities are taking lots of prosecutions and some don't take any at all. Um, so what's your thoughts then? Do you think food safety can be guaranteed by education and, and by trying to encourage people and motivate people? Do you think that's a very effective way of delivering public health? I think it can't be done, I, it can't be done in isolation. You've got to have enforcement. Local authorities, municipalities have got to have sufficient resources to be able to uh, prosecute those businesses that are exposing people to serious risk of health. This is very important for two reasons. One is it's a deterrent. And the other reason is because enforcement is about having a level playing field. And if you can get away without spending money on cleaning and training and repairing your food business, then if you're prepared to do that, you're spending a lot less money than somebody who is actually really doing a good job for food safety. So for those two reasons, you've got to do enforcement, take prosecutions where they're necessary, but also don't, don't forget the importance of education and advice. Yeah, and I think that whip on the wall, if they call it, is very important. I must say there are very few businesses uh, that say, hear the words, hello, I'm your local environmental health officer, that go, yay, you're here, thank you. 
I think a lot of people, it's a very nervous experience for them because naturally it's like if a policeman comes into your house, the first question you've got is what's the policeman doing here? Um, and it is difficult sometimes, isn't it? Because it's like if I'm driving my car and I think my tires might be uh, in a poor state of condition, I'm not gonna stop and ask the, uh, the policeman, are my tires okay? Because you'd be worried, well, he'll say, no, they're not, stop your car, give me the keys. You can't use the car until it's repaired. Um, so there is that fine balance between you know, giving education and being enforcement. And I think it's people in restaurants having the confidence that they can share with your environmental health officer, that if they share something they're concerned about, it doesn't mean the EHO is going to prosecute you or close your business down. Yeah, as I find with most EHOs in my experience, their first response is, how can I help you? Can I give you direct you to the right areas? Um, but as we see, Richard, there are lots of enforcement actions still going out there with some big fines. I see one of the big uh, restaurants was fined um, a couple of million pounds over simply yep. not having sell-by dates and things like that, or pest infections are now, and the big companies are getting fined in the hundreds of thousands and millions of pounds for pest infestation. So there is yep. a business cost as well. If you get it wrong, isn't it? It can yep. be a massive deterrent. It can close businesses down. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and um, fines uh, and um, punishments have to be proportionate. I think that that's important. And, and it was interesting when I was enforcing and I'd visit premises, I would be, as a, as a measure of whether or not I thought I had had a successful visit, those people that were committed to food safety and are trying their best to do the, the right things for the public were usually happy to see me. Whereas those that were, shall we say, not complying with the legislation weren't that happy to see me. And I thought, well, that's a good measure of whether I'm doing my job properly. So that those people that are trying the best, always pleased to see me. That's good. You know, they always used to say they were pleased to see me, every one of them. But when I walked out the door, I don't know if they, they really were or not. Um, so. Yeah. And you say fines, people are always arguing about fines, but they're very clear sentencing guidelines. I'm always telling people that courts don't just make up the fines, that they're guided by the, the, the guidelines, um, most certainly. Yeah. That's it, I agree. Okay, yeah. Richard, well, uh, thank you for your insights on what an EHO does and the tools that are open to them in their toolbox if they're trying to promote uh, food safety and ensure food safety as well. Um, yeah. I look forward to seeing okay, you at our next. Yeah, right. thanks a lot, Sterling. All the best. Bye.